So I've been making many, many sacrifices and many penances, trying, pleading to God that please, I love this baby so much. I want you to, to, to make, to do a, a very big miracle, you know, even if you can spread it in the papers, just if you can heal him. There's nothing of that. He's getting worse and worse and finish and finish. I will miss him very much because I love him very, very more than anyone else in the house. He's just hanging, hanging. I will miss him very much. 11-month-old Barney is HIV positive. His spindly body is barely the husk of a child his age. Barney is in the final writhing stages of AIDS. It's a little bit better. It's better. It's a little bit better. He was hotter. Maybe the bath will always help to take yeah. the fever down a bit. There's little more that can be done for Barney. The challenge now is to ease his suffering and to keep him comfortable. Okay. There's definitely a real little Barney in here that we know and love. He was always small and sick, you know. But uh, he definitely has a little loving little personality that responds to affection. All right, Barney. He's been doing this general downward trend for, for a couple of months now, and, uh, and he's, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely on his way out now. The little lights are going off, you know. Many of the babies at this children's home outside Johannesburg have already been infected and orphaned by HIV. Some will meet birth and death within a year. They're the youngest victims of the AIDS epidemic. But as the disease spreads, the South African government is locked in a debate about the very fundamentals of HIV AIDS. The government and its scientific allies are not convinced that HIV causes AIDS. Science uh, has not closed questions, you know, the debate has to continue. The so-called HIV AIDS uh, theories uh, have been postulated since 1983 and uh, up to now they have not had any answers whatsoever. And so you can't close uh, the questions. The questions have to be asked. <laughs> The wedding ceremony spills onto the streets of Soweto. It's a welcome celebration. Afternoons like this are a rare pleasure in Soweto's neglected townships. Inoka no and Kakla Maseko are stepping out for the first time as husband and wife. They're beginning married life with more freedom and opportunity than their parents dared to imagine. Many of the older guests enjoying the wedding were school students during the ugliest and most violent days of apartheid. They were among the children in school clothes who faced police in riot gear. Hundreds of their classmates were shot dead during the horrific riots here in 1976. But now amid the debris of apartheid, a new enemy is looming. AIDS is quietly swallowing young lives. Last year, the disease killed more than a quarter of a million South Africans. In South Africa, 4.2 million people are already infected with HIV, the largest HIV positive population in the world. Moses Kenyali died from AIDS 10 days ago. He worked as a telephone technician and was unable to afford life-saving medication. He's following his wife into an early grave. One death in every five minutes, or I think it is going to reduce to one minute now. As long as we do not get uh, generics or any medication, people are going to die in large numbers. So we need medication. Polo Holo Ramatwala is young, HIV positive and angry. 
He's part of the Treatment Action Campaign, a group which is demanding immediate access to affordable AIDS medication. The activists of the TAC say it's time for drug companies to loosen their patents and allow cheaper generic drugs onto the market. Most of the people who are HIV positive, they come to me on advice about treatment. So for me, sometimes I just think of leaving my job, not because I don't like my job, but because of uh, what is happening. People cannot get medication. But the drug companies are not the sole target of the protesters. The Treatment Action Campaign says it's the South African government which could ease the suffering of AIDS patients. The TAC says President Thabo and Becky should lead the way. Thabo and Becky is questioning the basic assumptions about AIDS. He argues that there's not enough evidence to prove that HIV causes AIDS. As other nations push ahead with treatment and prevention programs, President Mbeki is defending his approach. You have been portrayed or perceived as eccentric, arrogant, unhinged, off your rocker. These, these, these sorts of criticisms have been used to describe your behaviour in, in regards to the AIDS question. How do you feel about these criticisms that people are saying that you're off your rocker? Let's, um, I, my colleagues uh, uh, haven't said I'm unhinged. Uh, the people of South Africa have not said uh, I'm unhinged. Is President Mbeki being treated fairly about his approach to HIV AIDS? No, I don't, I don't think so. And uh, the, the people who hold uh, the view that HIV causes AIDS uh, dislike him. They dislike him for asking questions because um, they have something at stake. And Becky questions this. So those who don't like him, those scientists who don't like him, it is because uh, they have really not openly declared their interest in this debate. Thabo and Becky and his advisers say the link between HIV and AIDS is unclear. They accuse drug companies of clouding the debate. The drug companies have suddenly found that other parts of Africa do not have the logistics, do not have the capital, there's no chance of making massive profits. South Africa has the infrastructure to enable them to make the massive profits that they do. All the drug companies are here. You would think you are in the United States sometimes when you're in South Africa. That is the reason. In South Africa, is the epicenter for drug companies to supply the rest of Africa. So if you dismiss the question of HIV causes AIDS, drug companies will, will lose out. And I say let's get out and vote. People died so we could vote in this country. So the least we can do is actually exercise that vote. Um, but what is it My opinion is that, that HIV and AIDS should be like an invading force coming into the country, that the whole country should be mobilized to fight a war against HIV and AIDS led by the government, and uh, I don't think that has happened. John Robbie is the talkback king of Johannesburg, the powerful, opinionated, outspoken star of Radio 702. Do you accept that HIV causes AIDS? Why do you ask me that question today? I have answered that question umpteenth time. Yes, and the answer is? When he steadfastly challenged President Mbeki's health minister in a celebrated interview on the HIV AIDS controversy, Robbie quickly drew a stinging response from South Africa's governing party. I find your reaction to that question absolutely bizarre. That is my final word on it. I have to read the strategic framework. Bizarre. All right. And I, and I am... uh, go away. I cannot take that rubbish any longer. Five o'clock news headlines, the ANC issued a statement saying that unless John Robbie was fired, that uh, they would ask the unions uh, not to have anything to do with 702 and they would find it different. In other words, it was a direct threat. They were saying John Robbie has to go or 702 is out of the loop. 9 till 12 every weekday morning. The none too subtle subtext, the government was sticking to its claims that HIV does not inevitably yeah. cause AIDS and it wasn't going to put up with That's criticism. It is such a vital issue and you know we talk to medical people and we talk to people who work especially in the poorer communities where people are dying like flies because of AIDS and because the HIV statistics are so unbelievable and there is this perception 
that there are intellectual debates going on, you know, with people sitting on leather armchairs discussing academic issues while people are dying. And doctors are telling me HIV is the main cause of AIDS. We need action fast. And all we're getting is this ridiculous debate. Yeah, well, uh, let them produce the evidence which uh, shows that uh, uh, many people are dying. It would be help helpful if the media got out of this debate and left the scientists to sort the debate out through scientific uh, debate and uh, discourse. Oh, how did he sleep? Hello, Stimbiso. Mm -hmm. It's very depressing, extremely depressing. And but the pity of it is that you know that so many more people are infected that what we are seeing now is nothing compared to what we will be seeing in about six, seven years' time when all the people in the country who have HIV now have full-blown AIDS. Okay. I'll start here at the back. Bambala, pardon. At this hospice in Soweto, there's limited medication and only enough funding to operate four beds. But it's still a haven for those in pain. Okay. Tembizo is yes, slipping towards death. His doctor says he's unlikely to live another day. Does he know that it may only be another 24 hours? Not, he, we wouldn't tell him that it might be another 24 hours, but he knows that he has HIV, he knows that he has AIDS, he knows that he's got a terminal disease, an incurable disease, and he knows that he will probably die from it. He has insight into his condition. Good morning, gentlemen. The president is struggling to deliver a strong, clear message to his people. He's now under more pressure than ever before to lead the way. The government, too, is feeling the weight of expectation. As a result, it's starting to provide some much needed relief. The government has signed a deal with drug company Pfizer to distribute more than $100 million worth of antifungal medication. For their part, the pharmaceutical companies defend the high prices they charge for the more effective drug therapies. The pharmaceuticals, they are really, much as yes, they make money, they make profits, but basically they're there to manufacture, to, to, to discover, manufacture and deliver drugs. Do you get AIDS by eating? No. Do you get AIDS by hacking? No. In the long term, the only affordable no. option is prevention. You can only get AIDS by doing sex. Because if you don't use a condom, you will die. die. You will die. die. Because Personally, I feel we as Africans, we've not been quite open to our kids. In our culture, you can't teach children at this age about sex. But then with, with the present uh, situation and with life as it is beginning to change, it is necessary for them to know about AIDS, especially AIDS has actually brought us down because it, we have since realized that by not educating them, we are actually killing them. These children are a critically important target group for AIDS educators. They're in primary school and heading for the most dangerous age group of all. The United Nations has estimated that in South Africa, one third of all 15 year olds will die from AIDS. But these programs are rare and fail to reach those most at risk outside the school system. <laughs> For young people out on the street in the thick of high risk, there's no end to the dangerous myth and superstition. The myth is if a guy with, H, with HIV or AIDS sleep, sleeps with a the virgin, then their AIDS will get cured, you see, which is not true, not at all. 14-year-old Numfundo is smart and AIDS aware, but that's not true for many of her age, a generation doomed by ignorance and neglect. The future is supposed to be ours, you see. We're supposed to be the leaders of tomorrow. And if, because 
Lately, we, the youth, are dying before our parents are. And in the next generations, there's nothing our parents can do because they, I think they'll be all dead. And the, next, the generation after us are smaller kids and there's nothing they can do, you see, at that age. And our future is shattered, you see. It's, there's, the leaders of tomorrow are all going to die, you see because of AIDS and because they're ignorant and they're doing things to impress their friends. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven. This is what we're seeing actually. We're seeing the young teenagers now, 13, 14, 15 year olds, actually having babies. The babies are HIV positive and those are the babies that are lying in my cots now. You know, is that, you know, children like that end up um, having these babies and then the babies are positive and so it's a real it's a real downward cycle all the way along you know. babies like Barney and little Wendy who's also in the final stages of her disease okay, come on. they're the tragic cases filling the cots at the love of Christ mission since she established her mission here, Thea Jarvis has seen traditional family structures shattered, parents taken by AIDS, children heading the household, many falling into prostitution. Some of the little girls have got their little fingernails polished and they've got their lipstick on and, you know, and uh, you can already see that what they're into, you know, to, to try and survive as families. Most of them aren't going to school you know, and they stand along the tar road um, selling themselves and getting into cars, you know, and um, we can see that happening on a daily basis and they, they're doing that to try and um, keep their little families going, their sibling, baby siblings and so on. You know and younger siblings to try and uh, keep them together and keep them fed and so on. It's a very hard thing to live with, you know. I mean, um, when you've loved a child as your own since he was born, it's, it's very, very difficult. My pillow can tell you some stories of many soggy nights. As the AIDS epidemic continues to inflict despair and loss, President Thabo Mbeki is not wavering. He's determined to debate the science of the disease while others are left to deal with the consequences. If you look at the scale of the problem, it will paralyze everybody. All I can do is my little bit, and this is my little bit.